My text again is taken from 1 Corinthians 4, 5. <clears throat> Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then, and then shall every man have praise of God. Amen. Praise from God is the idea. Now, it's very important that men not be distracted by the affairs of this life. That includes such things as possessions and status and careers and success and all the other things that are connected with this world, yet that are limited to this world. It's essential that men not be unduly caught up with these things because they are competing with things that are eternal. Now, it's not enough just to say that men shouldn't do that. God is going to give them good reason not going to do it, to not do it. He's going to open up the future, things to come. He's going to open up the future and show you that what's reserved is better than what is. What's coming outweighs what is. That even applies to what you have in redemption. What you have in redemption is initial. It's the first fruits. It's the beginning. The best is yet to come. Life in the flesh or in the body, as the scriptures would refer to it, life in the body is only preparatory. It's a time in which we're sifted. It's a time in which we're qualified. It's a time in which to become acquainted with the way God works and how God is. See, man was created with eternity in mind, not time. It wasn't that God created Adam and that, that didn't work out too well, so he thought he'd try a second plan. His, plan's always, his plan never was for Adam to be the main person. It, ne it never was. He was just the main person on earth. And he could, he wasn't made immortal either. You all understand that, I trust. Wouldn't be for the tree of life, they'd have died. Because without it, they did die. So they weren't immortal. Adam and Eve were not immortal. That, that itself should tell, even if they lived to be at 900 or 1,000 years, that should tell us something. If God never did intend for them to be like, say, the angels, they are, they can't die. God didn't make man so he couldn't die. He made man dependent on the fruit of a tree Amen. to live on. So man was created with eternity in mind. Now God has spoken of his desire throughout scripture. God has occasionally leaked out this information of his desire to honor Men, see this, is, it sounds strange to some people. Some people have like a voluntary humility. They feel, well, I'm, we're so unworthy and so forth. Well, like this is a revelation? I mean, I mean people would say we're unworthy. We, that's one thing, we, pretty, we know that very well. They, can't, they capture this so much that when you say God's going to honor you, God's going to praise you, this doesn't, this doesn't wash. They say, oh, this... This can't be, but God, he's leaked some of this out. Uh -huh. Let's go back to the, the time before the judges. I think we're going back pretty early now. Or, or they, they at the tail end of the judges, we're going back pretty early, just before the kings. And here's something he said to Samuel. That's, that's quite a way back. First Samuel 2.30. Therefore the Lord, of, Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever, but now the Lord saith, 
Be it far from me. Here it is now. For them that honor me, I will honor. Here it is. That's pretty early in history. There it is. Them that honor me, I will honor. Amen. Amen. And them that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. That means he'll despise them too. It's right here, you've got set before you the issues of life are set before you. If you expect God to commend you, you better be about commending and honoring him now. Yes, amen. And if you don't pay attention to him now, he will not pay attention to you then. But this is laid out for us pretty plain. Now let's go a little, for, a little bit further to David and the Psalm, Psalm 1820. The Lord, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. <clears throat> Well, see, that'd be pretty brash for some, <laughs> for some people to say, but David said that, and God didn't say, you shouldn't say that, David. It's what he said. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. That's what he said. Amen. God's making himself something about himself known here. See, well, I thought salvation is not of works. He's not talking about salvation here. David's not saying the Lord saved me because of, I, I was righteous. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying was I got some of the good stuff from God because I live for him here. Yes. Amen. I was able to, I was given the work of taking out Goliath because I've been, I've been a faithful servant. I, I was in the backwoods out there. Nobody knew who I was. Given care of a few sheep sort of keep me busy. Nobody knew who I was, but see, I did, I, I protected those sheep. There come a lion and a bear in there, and I killed them. Just a boy, just a boy. A lion and a bear, two of the fiercest animals there, there is. And uh, so God gave me the job of taking out Goliath. Rewarded me according to my righteousness. See, how faithful have you been and where you're at? You gotta think about this because God's revealed He reciprocates in kind. Amen. Psalm 91 14. Because He has, this is God talking about people. Because He has set His love upon me, therefore will I deliver Him. I will set Him on high. I will set Him on high because He had known my name. Set Him on high where everybody can see Him. See, there's certain people in Scripture that were, ooh, they're exalted. Everybody, people, everybody, know, they know about them. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jay. They know about these people. Why? God set them on high. Because he, they set their love upon them. Were they perfect in all their expressions? They'd be the first to tell you they weren't. But their love was admirable. You think of what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gave up to follow God. Think of what they gave up. I mean, they weren't a big nation back then, you know. When they went into Egypt, there's only 70. It had been, been around for quite a while. There's only 70 of Abraham's offspring. But they are faithful. They didn't, they didn't blend in with the rest of the nations at all. Well, Solomon, he comes to the table. Let's let him have, have a word here. It's Proverbs 27, 18. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, so he that waiteth for his master shall be honored. He waits. Uh, sometimes things aren't working out too well. We're waiting. We're waiting. People look at us and they say, it's not paying off now. Look what happened. Why, why aren't you getting a lot of benefits now? Well, we're waiting. We're waiting. It's not the time yet for the rewards. Well, Jesus himself, the master speaks on this. John 12, 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be. Not, not where my servant is, there's, there's where I'll be. That's not what Jesus said. This is what people like. People like to think this is the way it is. He didn't say, where my servant is, there I'll be. He said, where I am, there my servant will be. 
And if any man serve me, him will my father honor. There it is. Do you want God to honor you? You've got to serve Jesus. If you see Jesus for who he is, you'll, this will be a glad service you'll render. So you see that God has spoken about this matter. I just gave you some two samples there. Now, honor involves a, a reward as well as words. You remember this honor bestowed upon uh, one of his faithful stewards in the parable? He said unto him, well done. This is God talking. <laughs> well done, thou good servant. Because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. Him will my father honor. Every man shall have praise of God. See, this is an example of it. Here's the Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison, and that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation Ten days. He's a devil. He is bound for a thousand years. The church has tried for 1,420 days. Thir yeah, 14, 1,360 days. Or a year and a half. But tribulation, ten days. Ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. There it is. It's an honor. I'll give you a crown of life. See, I'll give you a crown of life for dying. For being faithful till the time you died. I have this uh, secret aspiration to be conscious when I die, but I don't know whether that will be granted. But I, well, however it is, I want to I wanna be faithful until the time I die. And when the Lord gives you something to do, that faithful, faithful, the word faithful means you've been given something to do. That's what the word faithful is all about. What have you been given to do? What, what do you suppose you're here for? Raise kids and make a living? You really think that? That's some of the things you have to do well, but God's given you something to do that is over all of those things. Those, are under, those are under your larger stewardship. Amen. You're faithful? You've got this word now. For, you're faithful till day. You have to be faithful till day. You can't be faithful this year or faithful this week. You've all lived long enough to see people that were faithful for some period of time. Until death, if you're faithful unto death, I'll give you a crown of life. That's another way of saying you'll never die. Which means there'll be no weakness or disease or anything like that because <laughs> death is the mother of all infirmity. Because people die, that's why they're sick. It's all, all of that. But I'll give you a crown of life. Holds it out to you. Let's take it a little bit further. <clears throat> Revelation 2.28, or Revelation 2.26, He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Yeah. Say, what's that mean? Well, we got to wait to find <laughs> we got to wait to find out everything that means. But it sounds pretty good. See, men will lie, cheat, steal to be over nations. Oh, they'll do anything. They'll spend millions of dollars to be president. But here, power, I'll give you power over the nations. Amen. Or what I have to do to do that? Well, you have to be, you have to overcome and keep my works to the end. Amen. That's, that's the qualification. I tell you, this does need to be preached because I, I think this has all been...
covered up by all the how-to stuff and the counseling and the giving account and the days of purpose and all this has clouded up this whole thing. Revelation 2.28 says something else about the overcomer. It says, I'll give him the morning star. The morning, that's a star you can see after the sun come up. <laughs> that's a bright star. You might call it a day star. I'll give him the morning star. If he overcomes, faithful unto death. Oh, I don't know, need to go a little further. This is, we're talking about God praising people, honoring people. Revelation 3.21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. This is, this is reality we're talking about here. Now because I was uh, blessed enough to be raised by a man and woman of God who weren't interested in notoriety. Early in my life I grew accustomed to not being received by men. So this has never really been an issue with me even since, a, since I've been a young man. And I'm very grateful. I, this was God's doing to set me in this kind of an environment where I didn't have to learn that. See, some people, they never are, they never are taught that. They're, they're taught only to think of having recognition and rewards in this life. And this is the driving compulsion to everything they do to be somebody and do something big and I'll tell you, when you think about the end of the world, uh, the, that kind of stuff kind of fades back into the background. Amen. I'll give him the morning star. I'll give him to sit with me in my throne. Do you have some place else you'd rather sit? He'll sit with me in my throne. In the same sense, I overcame and sat down in my father's throne. So that means with throne, we're not talking about something about this big. <laughs> The throne of God is not a little bitty place. Amen. You got, you already know you're going to have God, Jesus, and everybody that overcome. Going to be in that throne. And Daniel, in Daniel 2, 17 and 22, said the time came when the saints took the kingdom. That's something to think about. The time came when the saints took the kingdom. Amen. In the 22nd verse, it says, The greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven was given to the saints. Well, I'm willing to wait for that, see? Well, I know you must be too. You must be willing to wait for that. This, see, this table in the wilderness is about things to come. They're all good things. But you do have to be willing to wait for them. Amen. You can't get impatient. You set your goals lower because you think you may be happier because you do. No. Set your goal high. Now this honor we're talking about is to be sought. You're to seek God's honor. I mean, you're, you're involved in this scenario in some way. Here's the words of Jesus. Here he upbraided some people who sought honor from men. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Oh. So people that seek honor from one another can't believe. I don't, know how, I don't know how else you'd figure that, you interpret that verse to read. How can you believe you seek honor one of another? Any of you that have been to Christian conventions know that there's special seats on the platform for the big shots. Special people are honored. They seek honor one of another. And some of these people, you'd never know of them at all. If their peers didn't honor them, you'd never even know they existed. 
The difference of seeking God's honor is you're willing to be in an unrecognized position if that's where God puts you. If he puts, takes you on the back side of the desert for 40 years, you'll still see him who's invisible, even back there in that wilderness, see? This is the way uh, God is. Well, I'm aiming to seek the honor that comes from God only, and I know that you desire to do that too. To do that, see, you don't, you don't put a priority on what people think about you. See, we should, we should not live so people see wrong in us. Well, yeah, if you're living to honor God, you won't. Um, come on, let's people, let's put the thing together. People need to be able to put things together. If you're seeking God's honor, you won't be a spiritual klutz. God's displeased with improper human conduct. See, people get down too low to talk about these. You've got to get up high. If you get people's aspirations high enough, they'll clean their life up. Uh -huh. You know, I understand there's some things you have to you have to address directly. I understand that. Romans 2 7, Paul said something about this. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor. What are you going to do? Lord, what are you going to do for people who patient, enduring, continuance, and well-doing seek for glory and honor? What will they receive? Immortality. So you see that um, God has spoken about honor and so forth. Now our text said, uh, judge nothing before the time. Don't uh, be premature in your judgments. Concerning yourself or other people. Don't, don't judge yourself. Well, I'm in. That's the boy. I'm safe forevermore. Praise God. Don't judge nothing before the time now. Don't say, well, they're not. It's obvious they're not in. To judge nothing before the time. The time. The time. There's some scriptures, in the scriptures, the Lord teaches us to think about certain signposts called the time. 1 Timothy 6, 19, speaking to those that are rich, told them not to trust in uncertain riches, but to handle them wisely, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. We're at spiritual philanthropists, giving as much glory as we can to God. And what, if you have more than the necessary resources, like don't build a new house or buy a fancier car, Uh, sure, but what do you do is your business. I'm not trying to sit in judgment on you. But this is what he's talking about here. If you've got more than you need, use it so it will lay up treasures for you in heaven where moth and rust doesn't, does not corrupt. Having said that, that's just, <laughs> it seems like out of order in our society to say something like that, but that's, that's how the Lord thinks. Revelation 11, 18. We'll talk about the time here. There's a time when foolish conduct, everyone that indulged in it will regret very deeply that they did so. There's a time coming when people that didn't use their life right, they're really going to weep and lament that they didn't, but it would be too late to do anything about it. So now's the time to do something. Revelation 11, 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come, and the time, the time of the dead. Huh? This is the same time Jesus is going to come. He's going to raise the dead. That's the time of the dead, when the dead are all going to, everyone who died going to show up again. The time of the dead when they should be judged. And thou shouldest give reward unto this, thy servants, the prophets. That's at the time of the dead. And to the saints, 
and reward to the saints, he yeah, at that time of the dead, and of them that fear thy name, time of the dead, small and great. See? So you may, <laughs> you may be relatively small in the kingdom of God, but your estimation, God's not going to, God's not unrighteous to forget your work of faith and labor of love. He's going to remember it, and he's going to give you recompense at the time of the dead. Revelation 14, 15, the time. Now, see the times what I'm talking about. Another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on a cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap. See, everything in the earth is um, headed for a culmination. It's all going to end. Everything's going to end. The time. Until the time. Judge nothing before the time. There's a culmination. You've got to keep it before your minds at all time. Everything's going to end. Dead are going to be raised. They're all going to stand before God. Everyone's going to receive what he, for what he's done, so you keep that ever before your mind. Anybody narrows it down a little more particularly until the Lord comes. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Amen. The Son of Man, Jesus said, shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he'll reward every man according to his works. Is that in keeping with our theme of this feast in the wilderness, you want to anticipate that in your living. Amen. To anticipate. Here's another expression, Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit on the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all the nations. And he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. See, now we're mingled, you know, with other people. When you go to work, you're mingled. Go to the store, you're mingled. <laughs> Any of your earthly activities are some kind of mingling. Yeah, where you live, mingled. But the time. We're going to come when there's going to be a separation. We're going to live in view of those times until the Lord come. Jesus said, now I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I come, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be. Amen. He doesn't say, the time's coming where I'm going to be where you are. That's not what he said. So I'm going to take you where I am. That where I am, there you may be also. That's 2 Thessalonians 1 10 says, when he comes to be glorified in his saints, so that there'll be an exhibit or a projection of his glory. He's going to come in glory, and the glory is going to match the appearance of his saints. <laughs> See, they're going to have the same type of appearance he does at that time. <clears throat> now then shall every man have praise from God, he says. Then shall every man have praise from God. Now, incidentally, up to this point, if all you had read was the book of Genesis, you would have no idea what I'm talking about. God didn't reveal this early on. That doesn't mean you don't need to know Genesis, but I mean, God wants his people to know this, but they've got to be converted. They've got to see how serious it is, and you've got to seek out what God has said on this subject. <clears throat> the angel every man have praise from God. Well, let's, let's take some examples of what that might be. Revelation 3, 5. Here's a promise God held out to a church. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, and I will, now here's some praise now, I will confess his name before my Father and before the angels. That's praise. He's like going to say, and this is, and this is Tony. That's not, what, that's not what he means. 
He's going to confess what he's done in you and confess how you've been faithful. This is how you're a sheep. He's going to confess it before the Father and before the angels. I gather that a larger part of the angels, the confession might be associated with him gathering up the saints. But it's going to, it's going to be confessed. See, that's a form of praise. Here, here's some words of praise in the parable of the stewards. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. It's, it's praise. As praise, Matthew 25, 21. Thou hast been faithful over a few. This is public now. This isn't like a private th private conversation going on. This is public. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Actually, a few things was everything he had. It wasn't that you, did, you are faithful over a few things that I gave you. <laughs> That's what he means. Because I just gave you one or two, but you were faithful over it. He's going to confess that. He's going to say that before an assembled universe. So what difference does it make if somebody praises? I'll oh, just transfer it to me. What difference does it make to me if somebody praises me or not here? I really don't care. I really don't. Well, if a, non, if a godly person says something bad, that would concern me. But I'm not concerned about what people think. Now, when I got a promise like this, I'm, I'm aiming <coughs> at having those words said to me. <coughs> Go a little further. Praise. Then shall every man have praise from God. Romans 2.29. He is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise, whose praise is not of men, but of God. There it is, again. Here are some again. 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in the body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. That's going to be a form of praise. Second Corinthians 10, 18, helping to shape our thinking on the matter says, For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Well, see, some people's theology doesn't allow them to think about God commending anybody. See, this is, this is what the scripture said. Peter says this in 1 Peter 1, 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perished, though it be tried by fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ. That is, it will honor God and the praise, and the praise will come your way and then you, of course, will give thanks. Give thanks to him. Then shall every man have praise from God. Now let me to remind you of some other expressions of praise in closing. There was a young man named David. Before he ever really was made famous or was well known, God said of him, he's a man after my heart. Amen. What was that? That was praise. Amen. Now you want to target God to be able to say that of you. There's something you got to work out, but you, you, you want to cover this, and God can say, there, there's a person after my own heart. I'm, he thinks like me. He's, I'm attracted to him. Here's, here's another word of praise. Now this will give you a tip of what's going to happen the, on the day of judgment. He said of Abraham, I know Abraham. He'll command his children after him to keep justice in the earth. Oh, that was praise. How about Moses? God said to Moses, he was faithful in all my house. That was praise. How about Job? God said to Satan, see how he maintains his integrity and is not sinned? That was praise. Now, the life we have in Christ Jesus is very real. 
time of testing that we're in now is very real. And the praise God will give to his people, that's very real too. Amen. Everything about salvation is real. I encourage you to seek this praise. Think about it often. Being praised of God, it'll, it'll make life more pleasant. It will make a lot of things that are sorrowful and grievous. It will reduce the magnitude of them when you think about it. You may have to go unappreciated for a good part of your life. Don't let it discourage you. Just be faithful unto death. God will praise you. And it will be before an assembled universe. <laughs>